Hey everyone, alright, so I'm here today just trying to give a brief overview about the Liberals and the Democrats because I had faced a very serious issue in terms of elections here in Connecticut. They voted in Ned Lamont, and I'm sorry, but he, he is not good for this state, and he's not good for anyone, nor is the Liberal Democratic Party. Now, they all have their own, um, hmm, I guess, appeal, one could say. Uh, the Liberals are the best, the masters of propaganda. Now, for the Liberal Party, right, they play on a few different things, and I'm going to outline that today. They play on uh, social welfare programs. Okay, they play on immigrants. They play on gender. Really, what it is is they play on minority. But at the same time, they use what I guess could say would be shame against people who don't agree with them. They use a lot of propaganda. They are the literal masters of propaganda, the Liberal Party. It's insane. And it's funny, too, because honestly, I think the Liberal Party is the most racist. Like, honestly, swear to God, they're the most racist. And not only that, they're the most self-serving. But because they're so good right here at this propaganda, you can't see that they're self-serving. Now, what we have over here is the Democratic Party. Or, sorry, not the Democrats, sorry. Whoops. I had wrote this previously. Let me erase that. Whoops. I meant the conservatives. Slash, um, you know, like right wing, whatever you want to call them. Slash Republicans. So these people over here, um, ba basically what people label them as, so this is like the label. I'll even put that here, label. Are old and rich right? The label for the liberals is young and poor. Now, before I even continue, like at all, which one would you rather be? Would you rather be old and rich or young and poor? I'll take old and rich, okay? So my point being is that before I even continue, like at all, the basis of this party over here, the liberals, is that you're young and poor. The basis here is that you're old and rich. What party would I rather be for? The one that assumes that we're going to be old and rich one day? Or the one that assumes that we're going to be young and poor? And thus die young and poor? Right? Okay. So if we're going to continue on, really what the conservatives want, they don't want the rich to get anything. They want everyone to be equal. They want equality. Okay, they want uh, free trade, right? They want capitalism. They want, and I'm going to spell this horribly wrong, laissez-faire. And my spelling of that has no bearing on my understanding of the term. It's a French term. So what are you, you know, unless you're a master in French language, and however many years it took you to do that, you know, no judgments here. So my point being, they want a laissez-faire attitude on the, on the economy. They want, to an extent, and here's the thing, is that being conservative changes country to country. Generally speaking, they want some sort of religious affiliation, which I do not agree with. However, what that leads to is moral absolutism. Right? And if you are following religious beliefs, and I don't believe in religious dogma, I don't believe in anyone going crazy over religion, I'm not religious myself, I'm philosophical, I believe in, to an extent, a certain spirituality, of course. However, we can't determine what religion is correct. And the one thing that conservatives do agree on is the fact that they want to believe in their respective traditions. Not that they want to respect a certain tradition, unlike the liberals. So now I'm going to jot over a few things really quickly just because I want people to have a basis of understanding right here, okay? Before I make any other videos. Whew. 
All right. So if you want social welfare programs, right? If you think that's a big check, a check plus in everyone's book is what it is. Social welfare programs are a big check plus. Understand you're using your money and everyone else's money and your time and everyone else's time. And here's my main point. Not the government's time. Okay? And it's not the government's money. The government doesn't make money. It takes money from you to do the things that it thinks should be done. So when you give the government money, it's going to do whatever it wants at its own discretion. So when you look back at history, at least in the United States, and I'm sure the same plays across any country, there's what we call embezzlement. Suddenly, a couple of years ago, I forget which year directly, I could link it, but what's the point? You could look it up yourself. We were missing $2.3 trillion, I believe it was, out of the government's budget that they took from taxes. They didn't make that money. They took it from us. $2.3 trillion. Can anyone out there watching this video right now attest to even having 10% of that sum in their own bank accounts? No. And here's the thing. If you're voting for higher taxes as a liberal to, to help these welfare programs... Note that it's all going to be embezzled anyway. You're going to lose it, because when you give the government more power, you give them the power to hide what they're doing. You know what I mean? The more say they have, the more money they have, the easier it is for them to hide. The easier it is for them to rely on you instead of themselves and their own abilities. Whereas with the conservative party, they don't want to tax you. They, don't, they want free trade. They want capitalism. They want people to grow rich through their own abilities. And that's exactly what the liberals attack. Like, for instance, Bill Gates. You think he got where he was today strictly because someone designated him as like, I'm the government and you deserve to be absolutely rich and I'm going to give you everything I can give you and reduce all your taxes and, and make you ridiculously wealthy and just because you're you. No, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's ridiculous. That's like, I don't even know how to explain that. That's basically conspiracy. Like, that's absurd. That's an absurd line of thinking. Bill Gates worked for his money. Steve Jobs worked for his money. For anyone to say that those men should have to give up their wealth to help other people is ridiculous. Not to say they shouldn't give up some of their wealth to help people just by being a generous individual. But Bill Gates helps tons of people. So does Steve Jobs. They donate all the time to charities and such. So there's no 1% holding you down like the liberals like to pretend. All there is is your own inabilities and your own lack of desire to learn and grow and teach yourself as an individual and, and believe in your abilities to accomplish success on your own by yourself. Okay? That's what holds people back, especially as liberals. And I'm not saying this in a mean way. I'm saying this in a way that I hope they understand that every human on this planet is capable of outstanding things. All of you can accomplish your wildest dreams and desires. All it takes is you going out there and doing it. As Bob Proctor likes to say, and I believe it was him, forgive me if I misquote, if you want definite results, you need to have definite purpose, which breeds definite action. So if you're just like, I want to be rich one day, that's one thing. But you know what Bill Gates said? I want to be... He probably didn't even say I want to be rich. He probably knew he wanted to be wealthy, but he said, I want to use the computer industry with these revelations that I've had in it to produce wealth, to become the man that I want to be. He had definite purpose, it bred definite action, and it brought him definite results. And the same with Steve Jobs and every other successful man, woman, or even child, because I'm sure there's young people out there who, who become wealthy, like this young woman I heard was an artist, uh, I forget where, but it was in a foreign country. I believe she was 13, but she believed in her artwork. She believed in her goal. She believed in her passion. And now this 13-year-old girl was feeding herself and her entire, besides her, four-person family, just through her efforts. And that's what I mean by conservatives and capitalism and free trade is the best. Because without these things, that young woman would have never accomplished her goals, would have never been able to get anywhere in life, and would have been sucked into the liberal agenda 
which turns countries into scum. You know what this is over here? This right here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna circle it. This right here, all this. This is all socialism. And I think we've seen how socialism works in places like Europe, right? Everyone for everyone. And then all of a sudden everyone gets sucked down in, in, into, into debt. Just like Greece. They get sucked down and then everyone helps them and the money disappears. And it's all government conspiracy. And, and that's where all the money's going is to government officials. And it gets embezzled and disappears. And who knows what happened to it. So this leads back to, to even the further past, the distant past. And I'm not trying to make this too complicated for you guys, but so you understand where I'm coming from, is that I'm not thinking on this on a short-term scale. Do you know what these two parties are? Right here we have Alexander Hamilton. And over here we have Thomas Jefferson. Okay, who ended up winning the end? It ended up being Hamilton, who wanted an industrialized America. Thomas Jefferson didn't win because he wanted an agricultural society. One that was God-fearing, good. Not saying God is good. What I'm saying is God-fearing. He, he said this. He wanted something that was God-fearing, good simple, laissez-faire, people do what they want, the government's only there for what's really important, like topics of national defense, organizing foreign affairs, like trade, organizing the economy, only in terms of that we have equal grounds to trade. So instead of being like Europe, right, instead of being like Hamilton, where Greece has different money and Europe in general is like 50 different currencies between Germany, France, UK, you know, all this different stuff. Instead of having all that, he said, let's, let's centralize it to a small extent and make it so that we have the American dollar. But states' rights supersede, you know, to an extent, federal law. You know, the feds aren't above us. We're above them but we utilize the feds as a tool. That's exactly what Jefferson wanted. And that's why, in my opinion, Jefferson is A-OK. -okay. What Hamilton wanted, right, was let's focus on money, let's focus on nonsense, let's build an industrial society with no real regard to, to one natural law, which I firmly believe in. Natural law is absolutely supreme, and I won't get into that right now, because I'm already 12 minutes into this video. But my point being is that he, essentially, is what led to the decay of society. Alexander Hamilton, in my opinion, is, is, is what led to everything happening as it happened today. He, if, if anything, is the Democratic Liberal Party, whereas Thomas Jefferson, a very pious, humble man, was the conservative right-wing Republicans. He wanted the best for the people. That's what we fought for in the revolution. The embitterment of the people and their own abilities to govern themselves. Not at all this liberal nonsense, which is a monarchy. I don't care what anyone wants to say. The liberals are a monarchy. Because what do they want? Welfare. Provided by what? The government. Which is what? A monarchy. Because if you provide enough leeches, free money, they'll just keep voting for you. So if I say, okay, immigrants, and I hugely diverted from the topic before I got to my points of covering these here, right? But I had to, to give you a, an understanding, because this is a very involved and deep subject, okay? And I'm not a professor, However, I am someone who's well-read, who understands the concepts, and who philosophically has thought about many things in his life, right? And am I the be-all, end-all? Hell no. If one of you out there has an idea, a comment, a subject, I want to hear it. And I want to know what you think, because something you say might change my mind. However, you also need to understand the depth of this conversation is that it extends beyond today. It extends hundreds of years before us. And it extends hundreds of years and thousands of years into our future. Right? If you let in all these immigrants, right? Like this. And you provide social welfare. This is money out. Money out. Where does the money come in? 
We want to say that bringing in immigrants will bring us money, but the amount of money we'll spend on welfare for them will it supersede the amount that they'll pay us, especially if they're let in illegally, at which point they won't be paying taxes necessarily. Now, I know some illegal immigrants pay taxes because you know what, you guys? My own father was an illegal immigrant. I'm Hispanic. I'm not white. I'm not privileged. I am a poor Hispanic born of an illegal immigrant father. And I still don't want immigrants in this country unless they come legally. I still don't want social welfare, even though my mother took social welfare to feed me. I would rather die and have died in my past to make my perfect vision of the future happen than let my feelings affect myself and my decisions and my votes. So for any privileged person out there saying, oh, you're not thinking of the minority, you're not thinking of the people, I'm more the people and I'm more the minority than you'll ever be. And I'm still saying it's wrong. I'd rather have been dead and not gotten any of these things than have it be true because these things are what led to the decay of our society. So although I'm looking for the embedment of my society, technically my birth and my allotments of this welfare and ability to live is what's decaying this society and that disgusts me. Anyone of true education would not want this over here. And I don't say that as an odd hominin, or rather ad hominin argument. What I'm saying is it's a, it's a literal fact coming from someone who's lived through this, who's been through this. I'm the man I am today because of this, and I still wish it wasn't true. All right? Now we're going to move on to gender. Okay? They use gender as a play. It sounds super positive, right? That's why I made the check mark there. Sounds positive. It's not positive. They're playing on your emotions and your feelings, right? Here's, here's the literal definition, right? I'm going to put it up here. Emotional slash feeling based. That's the left wing. Over here we have logic slash wisdom. Am I saying they convey their logic slash wisdom in the best ways they can? No. If you were gonna if they use logic and they do use wisdom, a lot of the times they don't use them in conjunction. Because if they use them in conjunction, they wouldn't seem as evil as they are today. The propaganda wouldn't affect them as much as it does today. But a lot of the time, they'll use logic to fight things. Right? They'll go, here are facts, facts, facts. What they're not using when they say those things are wisdom. Which is understanding that you need to see where someone's coming from. And then use your logic in conjunction with your wisdom to, to produce, rather, let me write it out here, a result. They are wise because they use evidence from the past to project potential futures. But they're not wise in the way that they address the people around them. And that's not their fault because they're more logical individuals, so it's hard to relate people who are emotional-based individuals who are the vast majority. Which, not to go back further into time, but I'm going to jump back down to here, Alexander Hamilton versus Thomas Jefferson, right? In their time, who could vote? It was um, the equivalent of white male landowners. That's who could vote back then, pretty much. Um, and I'm doing this to a more or less historical content, uh, or context, rather. I could be wrong in my time frame, but this was more or less who could vote then. And the reason this was then was because these people had a stake in the country. Because they own something. They're producing something. Not to say women couldn't produce, but at the time they didn't. Whether that was because of social stigma, or ability level, or whatever, I'm not arguing. My point being is this was how it was, and that's that. It arrived how it was there too for whatever reason, and as we grew as a culture and a society, we learned to understand that women can produce and provide to the world as a whole. Now, even if I was born back then, I would never, ever, ever assume that a woman couldn't produce something. Just like these men. Even George Washington highly valued his wife's opinion. Any woman I would ever marry or 
or even consort with, talk to, whatever, I would have to highly value her opinion and her abilities as an individual. Okay, I understand women have the ability to be as good as men, but here's what I also understand, is that most men suck, and most women suck. Okay, so what does that come down to in the end is personal ability. Right? So what shows personal ability? Someone who owns land or produces something. Right? So if, at that particular time in life, only white males owned or produced anything, that's not pure coincidence. Just like if you look at South Africa today, I think it's something along the lines of 70% of the land was owned by 9.8% of white people who moved there, or maybe didn't even live there, but just owned land there. That's not coincidence. It's the fact that the resident population was unable to purchase and cultivate land to the point of making it worth anything. You see my point? Maybe in time, the African population can learn to do things their own way and produce and cultivate land. Fine. But just like Zimbabwe, they took all the land from the owners who were there who produced and grew and, and made the world what it was. And then it all collapsed immediately. So, so what, are you, what are you trying to say when you're saying, let's promote equality? What is equality but what you can produce and what you provide to society? Right? There's legitimate measures for these things. Now I'm going to move on to minorities, right? So minorities, does, I don't mean Mexicans, Hispanics, blacks, um, people who move here like Ukrainians and Russians. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like the, the people that supposedly don't matter, like the 3.1% or like not even the 3.1%. What are, what are transgenders these days? I don't even know. But my point being is they focus on like a, a minority, like transgender, like Mexican, like black, like Asian, and they overplay it, right? They claim cultural appropriation all the time. Let me do this over here. Cultural appropriation. What, what even is cultural appropriation? Okay. How many kids in their lives have gone out on Halloween dressed up as a knight? Tons. Tons, I'm sure. I wanted to, too. But guess what? I'm Hispanic. Should I be dressing up as a knight? I have no, no heritage to that European culture. Because knights only exist in European culture. Technically, any Asian kid who wanted to dress up as a knight should have been a samurai in their eyes. And no white kid who wanted to dress up as a samurai should be one. They should be a knight. What is that? What is that? Ultimately, what does that come down to? That comes down to racism. Okay? That's what it is. You're saying that doing this is only what one culture does. You can't wear a poncho because you're Italian. They don't even say Italian. They just say white. They avoid the fact that Italians, Russians, and Britons are 100% different. They may all be in Europe. It doesn't matter. Germans, Italians, Russians, Britons, they all have different specific cultural heritages that are unique to them and very special. And I know that as a historian. But they lump them all into white people. Right? And then they say that you, as white people, can't do these things because, oh, you can't celebrate... Now, I'm not saying this specifically. This is an example. You can't celebrate Kwanzaa because you're a white person. That's a black holiday, is what they're essentially saying. You can't dress up in a poncho with a, with a mustache on and hold maracas. That's a Mexican thing. That's racism. They're promoting racism subliminally. And, and what they're saying is, yeah, it's great to be Mexican, but don't you dare dress like a Mexican. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's racism. Do you guys not see that? It's horrible. Literally, liberals are the neo-Nazi party and the neo-monarch, the neo-monarchy, really, and they're hiding their true messages through proper through propaganda to trick everyone and push them away from the conservative right wing, who doesn't play these games with people. They give harsh, cold facts, and they don't back down. 
And that scares people because it hurts their emotions. Because most people feel they don't think. And that's what it is. You feel if you're left-wing. You think if you're right-wing. And that's not always. A lot of right-wing people go out there, oh, kill all the liberals, kill all this, kill all that. Yes, but here's the thing. They're just as bad as you people who are running out there kicking phones out of people's hands at, at um, demonstrations. Who are out there filming everyone you see promoting something you think is against your beliefs. Whereas the conservatives don't do that. They see someone out there pr protesting, they go to film them, and then you call them a racist. Or, or, or uh, I don't even know what else. Essentially, mostly it's racist is what you call them. And it's wrong. Because there's no such thing as, as I mean, yes, there is racism. But there's no such thing as racism if you're providing true facts about something, right? So what they do with that is they shame people. So they bring that right down here and they shame people. You're a racist, you're a misogynist, you're part of the patriarchy, you're part of this, you're part of that. Bull. Okay? <laughs> Absolute bull. Bull. Because I could go down to any liberal, pretty much, and frickin' slap them sideways upside the head with logic through talking to them. And what do they ultimately come down to? I don't want to talk about that. Oh, well, you haven't earned the right to ask me that yet, as our recently elected frickin' I think she's like the senator of Connecticut or something. I don't even remember because she's so inconsequential to my life. I'm going to pull up facts later for you guys. Right here, what I'm doing is providing logical evidence. I'm not talking about today's necessarily, not necessarily today's political situation, although this is today's political situation. But what I'm saying is I'm not going to drag Trump into this or anyone else like Obama into this, because honestly, Obama was garbage. He was no better than Trump. Trump's no better than Obama. Neither of them actually made any difference anyway, because all that happens is that Congress and Senate make the difference, right? I don't care if you guys agree with it. That's the truth. You can say, like, I went to Amity High School, and suddenly I saw this ad the other day, or like a, what do you call it, a news feed article that was like, oh, Amity's anti-Semitic. <laughs> Are you kidding me? First of all, 90, if not 98% of Amity is white. And beyond that, at least 50% of them are Jews, including my, a good friend of mine, who I'm not going to name right now because he didn't give me his consent to be in this video. But my point being is that most of the people there are white Jews. Okay, that's just a sheer fact of the matter. And guess what? When I went there, kids did stupid st stuff too. Yeah, I've seen a I've seen a swastika around the school. Sure, I've seen it carved in somewhere. Sure, I've seen anything like that. That's just what kids do because they're dumb and stupid. Okay, and now they're saying, "Oh, when Obama was in office, it was never like this." Yeah, when Obama was in office, it was never like that. My butt. Just no one reported it because they didn't have this hatred towards Trump or the president, they were just like, oh, that's an isolated incident. Obama would never want that and didn't expect that. That's not the reality of the situation. But now that Trump's in office, it goes, oh, it's because of Trump. Trump's causing kids to carve swastikas places. Trump is causing kids to cause vandalism. My butt. When I was in Bentley University, Obama was still in office. And they carved a swastika on some kid's door, and I think they even spread shit all over another door, too. Like, actual human feces. Not because, I don't think it was because the kid was a Jew. I think they just did it just because. But my point being, um, is essentially that you can't blame things on, on a person or a, or a political party just because you feel that way all of a sudden. There has to be legitimate backing behind that, and there never is in the Liberal Party. They always push all this shame and, and propaganda and BS, and they are the masters of freaking propaganda right here, okay? They're on, like, every TV show saying gender doesn't exist, everything's fluid, everything's this, everything's that. Nonsense. I'm gonna tell you guys one thing right now, whether you agree or not, you're a man or a woman at birth. Now, if you decide you don't feel, right, look, if you don't 
feel underline underline you don't feel like a man or a woman that you were born to be fine I absolutely support you and I care about you and I hope that you get the help that you need to become whatever you feel like being however logic and wisdom dictate that you're a man or you're a woman regardless of how you feel feel right so what does that come down to in the end transgenders and any kind of polygamous not polygamous sorry I'm, I'm getting out of that's a bit broad there um, anyone who's transcending the gender norm has a disorder I'm sorry it's a disorder I have glasses right I don't have 2020 vision I wasn't born with that that grace it's just a sheer fact of my biological DNA. I need glasses to see right. You know what that is, you guys? That's a disorder. I'm not normal. I'm not what should be. I am a defect due to the lack of natural selection. Does it hurt to say that? Yeah. Does it hurt knowing that if I was left in the wild with no modern day technology that I would be at a severe disadvantage to anyone with 2020 vision despite my mental capacity absolutely but is it a sheer fact of the matter hell yeah and I'm not ashamed to admit that because regardless of my disabilities here I am today with my glasses not only that my martial arts training and I and I and my wilderness survival training and I'll bet I'll outlast 90% of the not 90% let's say like uh, 70% uh, probably of people out there in either a wilderness setting, um, you know, like a martial setting, like someone attacking someone or anything like that with or without my glasses. But the point being, I worked past that, right? So that's what tra transgender people need to understand. You're no different than someone who needs glasses. You're no different than someone who's born without an arm or without their legs. You're a defect. You're a disorder. And there are methods to treat it. Whether that be sex change operations, fine. But it shouldn't be out of taxpayers' pockets. So anyway, I'm not going to continue on any further into the subject, but now you see how I feel and, and what is actually true. Because anyone who's not the norm is definitely different. Is different bad? Did I ever say that? No. I fully accept anyone who's different. But don't pretend that you should be the norm and that everyone should work around you. Should every sign on the highway be three times bigger just because I need glasses to see? And without my glasses, I couldn't see the sign on the highway? Hell no. So why should we be letting all these people into the bathrooms of opposite genders that they don't belong to? Just like they let um, a male prisoner who claimed to be female into a female prison, and then he just went and raped all the female inmates because all he really wanted was some, you know, pussy. And he knew that by claiming to be a woman, he could go and get that. You know, so that's my point. And also to come back to the most racist, they are the absolute most racist party, because, like I said, the uh, the uh, uh, the cultural appropriation. You can't do this because you're you're white, and that's a black thing to do. You can't do this because you're white, and that's a Mexican thing to do. Well, how come Mexican people, Hispanic people, how come Russian people, Japanese people, how come they all wear suits? Okay, a suit is a western type of clothing yet it's uniform across all business why is that how come they aren't saying that uh, the Chinese should be wearing their traditional robes because that's what the Chinese had before Western society came in and took them over and changed them they had robes and appropriate headdresses and things like that just like uh, Native American society had specific formal wear just like black society had specific formal wear in Africa Jamaica and the Caribbeans everyone had their own specific formal wear however it all got adopted to European formal wear why is that is that not a is that not cultural appropriation how come we're allowing all these cultures to wear our cultures clothes and by our I don't necessarily mean mine, because I'm only half white. Well, my point being is, why can everyone wear Western clothing? 
which what what even is Western because Britain is Eastern to us as Americans. How come all these people wear white Western clothing? And that's not a cultural appropriation. But if we wear what they wear, it is a cultural appropriation. It's because they're trying to normalize Western society while removing any form of individuality from society while pretending to promote acceptance. All false, all fallacies, all incorrect. They are self-serving as well disgusting it's disgusting really they let in the immigrants they they promote the the all these different ridiculous genders that are all disorders they promote shame they promote minorities who they don't care about at all they promote propaganda and racism to what end to convince people to vote for them what they want are votes votes okay that's what they want because they're a monarchy. Once the people with welfare are on welfare, if they don't vote for the Democratic Party, they'll lose their welfare and lose their way of life. That's also why the Democratic Party wants big business to fail. Because they want everyone to rely on welfare so that everyone's under their control. Because if anyone doesn't listen, they could pull their welfare and that person will essentially be condemned to death. That's a fact of the matter. Whereas with the right wing, there's no aid. There's no nothing but your community around you. But why should the government be helping you? The government doesn't matter. The government isn't supposed to exist. The government's just there to handle things that by consequence of large populations of people happen, like like trade between nations and things. They're not here to help and and, and, and like give you aid. What they're here to do is teach you that you're capable and your community is capable of helping each other and helping yourselves and, and the betterment of people as a whole and, and believing in each other. Whereas the liberals are about not believing in anyone but the government. Do you see the difference is that this is a monarchy. That's exactly what this is, is a freaking monarchy. Whereas the conservatives are literally what you want. They're the ones who are really promoting your embitterment. They're the ones who don't want to affect your economy. They're the ones who don't want to affect uh, necessarily like the equality between people. Every, every person born alive has specific and individual human rights, and that's a fact. They want you to get old and rich, but only through your own work and your own efforts. Because if you don't put in work and effort to produce wealth... Where is the wealth that you want in life going to come from? Explain that to me. Like, let's say Bill Gates became a millionaire, right? Let's say he became a billionaire even. And then 90% of America didn't. If 90% of America took his wealth, why should he even keep working? That's borderline communism. Like, what are you fighting for, you liberals? I don't understand. You want socialism or communism? Either way, whichever one you want, I don't understand. Why should anyone work really hard and achieve anything and produce anything for society just to have it taken away from them by people who did nothing with their lives? That's the exact opposite of capitalism. Capitalism is you get to advance at the ability of your own level. If you are a peasant but you have the mind of a king, you can go and do it. That's what capitalism is. That's what it is. That's laissez-faire economy. Okay, that's equality. All right, you guys? Now, if you're following the freaking liberal agenda, okay, if you're a serf, a peasant, with the mindset of a king, you're going to be stuck in social welfare programs. You're going to get thrown into shame and propaganda and racism and self-serving nature. You're going to die young and poor. That's what it is. This side over here, the left, is for people with a lack of ambition and drive. People with ambition and drive want the conservative agenda. 
That's the honest to God truth because these people who want this side know that one day they're going to be old and rich. People that want this side have no further thought than dying young and poor. And that's the honest to God truth about the government. And I'm going to come back to you guys with more videos. This lasted 40 minutes, way more than I expected. But yet again, this isn't something you can necessarily just glance over in like a tiny fraction of a second. Okay? So I'm going to come back to you guys with more videos, more specific ones that will be a lot shorter. But this is the basis of what I'm saying. Okay? The conservatives don't want any involvement in your affairs. They want the minimum role that they can play, whereas the liberals want to take over your lives. They want to use their welfare programs to drain money from the people who are already poor, scraping by paycheck to paycheck. Right? They're going to steal from them because the rich won't be affected by these tax cuts. Because the, the rich, they're already being taxed appropriately. I'll play it out for you guys this way. I'm going to put it over here, right? So ignore everything beyond here, okay? If person A makes 40K a year and person B makes 10 million a year and they each get taxed And they each get taxed 15%. Who's being taxed more? I bet at least 40... No, honestly, probably 60% of you are going to say that this person's being taxed more. That's impossible. That's impossible because it's a percentage tax. Do you guys understand what a percentage is? Is that it scales with your income. That's what it does. It scales with your income. So that person right here, let's do the math. I want to pull up a freaking calculator for you guys. If you're making 40k a year times 0.15. So that's 6000. Uh, let me get a text tool. Person A is 6000 a year. Tax. Okay? Now 10 million a year. That's like a lot of zeros. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, times 0.15. Oh my lord. Wow. A million five hundred thousand a year. Let me go back to the front and redo that. Wow. So anyway, to put that into perspective, let's divide that by the $6,000 the person A had to pay in taxes. Person B covered 250 people at person A's level. Do you see my point about percentage of taxes being fair? That's why it was instituted in the first place. Liberals keep wanting to take more and more from the rich. How much can you take from the rich before they don't want to be rich anymore? Before they don't want to provide to society anymore. Before they don't want to increase their businesses. Before they don't want to expand and grow and provide back to the economy. Because that's what rich people do. I don't care what anyone says. What rich people do, like person B here, is they build businesses. And they invest in stocks which increase companies' growths. Which hire new people and increase employment. And these people, these are the gods of our society. I want to be this. I want to provide to society. I don't want to be this. I don't want to take away from from society and welfare. I want to be a productive member. Because there's a balance sheet in life, you guys. There's a plus and there's a minus. Do you want to be a plus? Because there's only like two or three of those for every ten minuses. And that's why our society fails. Okay? We need to become this. We need to become the right wing. We need to try hard. And not be this disgusting liberal agenda of self 
freaking purveying failure. That's what they, they believe they're themselves to all be failures, and they're just horrible people. Honestly, you think you're being good if you're a liberal, but you're not understanding the base underlying facts of the liberal party. And why they exist as they do today, it's because they provoke themselves, because they're a monarchy, because they're racist, because they use propaganda, and because they're self-serving socialist pigs. That's the, the sheer fact of the matter. They don't care about other people. If you cared about other people, you'd get off your butt and go volunteer at a soup kitchen. <clears throat> and instead of paying taxes to the government, you'd take the money out of your pocket, walk into the slum, and hand it to the person who needs it. But you're never going to do that. You're going to give it to the government that embezzles you because they provided you with propaganda. And you felt better about doing it. So either way, that's the end of my first video, you guys, about the government. I'm just so sour about people not understanding these facts. And I'm going to get into things like abortion and all that later on because I know you guys care about that. I'm not going to get uh, – I might even go into things like weed. But you want me to be honest with you is that I think weed and alcohol should all be illegal. Not because people shouldn't have the right to do them, but because whether or not someone believes they should or should not do them – they're honestly not good for you guys. They are motivational killers. They turn you into things you're not meant to be and that you can achieve happiness and nirvana through personal thought and meditation in the Eightfold Path. So anyway, you guys have a great day. It was wonderful talking to you. Any comments you guys might have, toss them into the comments. I'll answer you. I'll make a video specifically answering your question. But yet again, I don't want biased questions in the comments. I don't want you guys going, I volunteer, what about me? I don't care about you. I care about what 9 out of 10 people do. You might be 10% of the population. Thank God you exist. Thank God as a liberal, you're volunteering and promoting things and already donating and having that kindness leach out of your heart and mind into the community. Thank you for existing. We need more people like you. If we had more people like you, we wouldn't even need a liberal party. Nor would we need a democratic party, because the Democrats want exactly that too. They just want it in the right way, not the wrong way like the liberals do. So anyway, thank you guys for listening to my um, my rant, I guess. I was just blown away by what's going on here in Connecticut. No one really understands what's going on, or really what either party stands for, or even their agendas. It just seems like... If someone's black or Hispanic or Asian, they instantly get a leg up. And that in itself is racism. So thank you guys. Have a great day. Like, subscribe, comment. I'll get back to you ASAP. And I love you guys. Peace.